Hello there, I am Sagar Jatani from Department of Electrical Engineering. Today I am here to start our lecture number 9 that is of chapter number 1 that is introduction to the signal. In this section we will discuss about uh, some elementary operations or uh, some operations on the signals that is of the signal additions, signal subtraction, signal multiplication, signal differentiation and the integration. These are the last topic of our chapter number 1 that is of introduction to the signals. From the next chapter or from the next lecture we will start the lecture chapter number 2 that is of a system. Okay. So now let's start from signal addition. So the name suggests we are editing two signals to the other signals. Uh, we are editing for example we are editing x1, x1 of t to the x of x2 of t. So let's start the signal addition. The addition of a two signal is nothing but the addition of their corresponding amplitudes. It means in this signal addition operation, we are just adding uh, the magnitude of two signals. For example, if the, if here has a magnitude of one and here has a magnitude of one, so by taking care of its location, we will add its magnitude and we will have a, a other resultant output. This can be best explained by using the following example. So now let's take the uh, one arbitrary rectangle wave that is the x1 of t and the other arbitrary uh, rectangular wave that is of x2 of t. x1 of t is starting from a minus 3 to 3 and it has a constant magnitude of 1. After that the x2 of t has the magnitude between of a minus 10 to 10 and has a constant magnitude of 2. And this is the resultant waveform after adding the x1t plus x2t. So this step by step process is listed here. See this. First of all we will start from a minus 10 to 3. Here somewhere we, we shall have a minus 10 and here we have minus 3. So first we will start from the region from a minus 10 to minus 3. So minus 10 to minus 3 x1 doesn't have any value. It doesn't have any magnitude. It means its magnitude is a 0 from minus 10 to minus 3. So see here first we, first we have taken a minus 2 to minus 3. The amplitude of Z of T. Z of T is a resultant waveform after addition of X1T plus X2T. So in the first waveform of X1T we have applied X1T is equal to 0. Now let's go for the X2 of T. See here the range of minus 10 to minus 3. The x2 have the value of a magnitude of a particular rectangular waveform is of 2. So we have added the directly the magnitude of a 2 to our x1 of t. So 0 plus 2 will give 2. It means the range of a particular waveform minus 10 to minus 3 it has a new magnitude that is of a value 2. See here the same graph we have taken uh, for the time axis. Here we have a minus 10, here have a minus 3 and it has a constant magnitude of a 2. See here we have constant magnitude of a 2. Simple. Now let's discuss for minus 3, 2 plus 3. Right? We can uh, do for this 0 but we have a same value for minus 3 to 3 and for minus 3 to 3. Here we doesn't have any change in the graph that's why we have taken minus 3 to 3, minus 3 to 3. So now we are adding the both region from x1 of t and x2 of t. So we have taken minus 3 to 3 region amplitude of z of t. There is a z of t is a resultant of our graph and that is uh, after the addition of x1 t and x2 t. So now let's find the magnitude of x1 t and that magnitude of x1 t is of 1. The value of 1 minus 3 to 3 the x1 has a constant magnitude of 1. So we have added here 1. Now for the x2 of t for x2 of t we have one single graph from minus 3 to 3 we have a magnitude of 3. So from minus 3 to 3 we have added x2 of t is equal to 2. So 1 of 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. x1 of t is equal to 1 x2 of t is equal to 2. So resultant will be of 3. So we are adding same value in z of t from minus 3 to 3. From minus 3 to 3 the magnitude of graph will be of 3 so we directly draw one line of the magnitude 3
and then we will add the regions from uh, 3 to 10 from 3 to the 10 the amplitude of z of t will be of x1 t plus x2 t is equal to 0 plus t 0 plus 2 so how how 0 comes here see here uh, from 0 uh, from 3 to 10 we have 0 magnitude of x1 of t or we doesn't have anything uh, the value of particular graph is 0 now for x2 of t from region 3 to 10 we have the magnitude of uh, 2 because it is a constant graph so from 3 to 10 we can assume that here has a value of uh, magnitude of a 2 so 0 plus 2 will be of 2 so this is the simple simplest signal addition of a 2 signals uh, we can add two triangular waves or any two short tooth wave but short tooth have uh, some uh, undefined value after some interval of time and same sine wave has uh, infinite points of value so we can add them it is possible but it is a uh, some tedious process so we have taken here uh, some basic examples for the signal addition now let's discuss the signal subtraction same as addition but little bit of difference see here i have taken say, same example for the signal subtraction uh, what signal subtraction say signal subtraction of two signals is nothing but the subtraction of their corresponding amplitudes simply again we are taking care of its amplitude we are not considering its uh, location yes we are just considering its location for just to add the amplitude of particular signals when we are subtracting it now this can be explained by the following example so again let's take two arbitrary signals that of x1 of t that has a magnitude of 1 and it is ranges from minus 3 to 3 on the time axis now let's take the x, x2 of t uh, with constant magnitude of a 2 and which is ranges from minus 10 to t uh, minus 10 to 10 from uh, in the t axis now let's start to subtract particular equation from minus 10 to minus 3 ready minus 10 to minus 3 again in the x1 of t there should be a minus 10 and here there should be a minus 3 so minus 10 to minus 3 the region we are considering so z of t is equal to x1 of t minus x2 of t it gives a 0 minus 2 why here a 0 because uh, here in x of x x1 of t there is uh, some arbitrary point that may be here of uh, minus 10 so there is a minus 10 to minus 3 there is a zero magnitude so we have taken here a zero and in the x2 of t from minus 10 to minus 3 we have a magnitude of a 2 so we have put here minus 2 and this is the sign of the subtraction what is the minus 2 here there is my mistake uh, here should be of a minus there is a simple thing now let's uh, subtract 0 minus 2 that will give a uh, minus 2 means uh, the resultant z of t graph has a uh, magnitude of a minus 2 in the region of a minus 10 to minus 3 see here from minus 10 to minus through uh, minus 3 we have the value of uh, we have a negative magnitude of a 2 negative magnitude of a 2 see here from minus 10 to minus 3 i have a negative magnitude of 2 now from minus 3 to 3 minus 3 to 3 again minus 3 to 3 so now minus 3 to 3 uh, the x1 of t has a magnitude of uh, 1 so x1 t has a magnitude of uh, 1 see here minus 3 to 3 has a magnitude of 1 now let's take care of uh, x2 of t so x2 of t has a magnitude of 2 between minus 3 to 3 so here we have a 1 here we have a 2 so 1 minus 2 it will gives a minus 1 so the region minus 3 to 3 has a magnitude of a minus 1 simple thing again now let's discuss for the region that is from 3 to 10 and it has a resultant amplitude of z of t that is given by x1 of t minus x2 of t ready here should be a minus sign is equal to 0 minus 2 is equal to minus 2 how 0 comes because uh, in the x1 of t there is a after 3 to 10 there is a 0 magnitude that's why we have taken here 0 and now in x2 of t here from 3 to 10 
here from a 3 to 10 we have a magnitude of a 2 that's why I have taken here 2 0 minus 2 will give us a negative value of 2 that is shown here so this is the resultant graph after the subtraction of x1 from x2 of t now see here the same example that I have uh, given to you for the uh, practice see uh, do, uh, do, do this practice by yourself uh, subtract x1 from x2 of t uh, or I can say x1 of t minus x2 of t means subtract this signal you will have this output and uh, subtract uh, add both signals you have a same output ready so practice it you have a question and you have uh, answers now same thing again for the signal multiplication now you have a good grip on uh, signal addition and sub signal subtraction so, so same thing we are repeating for the signal multiplication so we have again I have again taken same example for the signal multiplication see here what signal multiplication say that the multiplication of two signals is nothing but the multiplication of their corresponding amplitudes means again in the signal multiplication we are just taking care of its magnitude uh, we are doesn't care uh, we are doesn't care about the location of the particular signal but yes uh, during the multiplication we are taking care of uh, location also so now again let's take arbitrary function x1 of t and other arbitrary function that is of x2 of t both are rectangular in nature it is the starting x1 of t starting from minus 3 to 3 it has a constant magnitude of 1 again the x2 of t has a magnitude of a 2 and it is uh, starting from minus 10 and dies out after 10 and the resultant waveform after the multiplication has a value of uh, z of t that is given by the x1 of t into x2 of t simply so now again let's this uh, uh, particular divide this region into three regions from minus 10 to minus 3 minus 3 to 3 and 3 to 10 and this is the resultant waveform z of t is equal to x1 of t into right, a dot shows the multiplication symbols and uh, x1 t into x2 of t that gives a 0 into 2 how 0 comes because from z minus 10 to minus 3 there is a no value of x1 x1 has a 0 value 0 magnitude so we have taken here 0 and for the x2 x2 of t we have uh, from minus 10 to minus 3 we have a magnitude of 2 so it is multiplied by 2 it gives a value of 0 so from minus 10 to minus 3 we have a magnitude 0 so see here from minus 10 to minus 3 we have a magnitude of 0 simple again let's take region from minus 3 to 3 we have result on z of t that is multiplication of x1 of t x2 of t uh, that is equal to 1 into 2 how 1 comes here because from minus 3 to 3 the x1 has a constant magnitude of a 1 that's why we have taken here 1 same for the x2 of t uh, x2 of t we have taken here 2 why we have taken here 2 because from minus 3 to 3 we have a constant magnitude of a 2 so 1 multiplied by 2 that will give the answer of 2 from 3 to 10 from 3 to 10 we have a value of 0 in the x1 graph and now 3 to 10 of x2 we have again a 0 graph uh, sorry we have a 2 the magnitude of a 2 so 0 into 2 that will give a 0 so resultant z of t will be of 0 so see here resultant from 3 to 10 we have taken 0 so this is the resultant graph that is of uh, minus 3 to 3 and has a constant magnitude of uh, 2 now see this uh, I have taken uh, also one example of x1 of t and x2 of t you have to multiply this is the example for your homework uh, this is the particularly you have to consider this point for example uh, as we have divided the regions uh, here for the signal addition subtraction and multiplication same same regions you have to put here for example the first region is from 0 to 1 you have to consider x1 region from 0 to 1 and also uh, for the region 0 to 1 for x2 of t now again you have to take the second region that is a 1 to 2 here in x2 t also 1 to 2 and after that 2 to 3 and 2 to 3 after the multiplication of the signal you have this answer that is a given here in the c so 
I have taken this example from the book uh, name as uh, Signals and System by Anand Kumar. The publication of this book is a PHI publication, right? So if you are interested to solve more examples, then you can also call me or message me. I will send some more examples related the to the signal operations. But uh, for the practice, I have listed here some example only. Uh, now let's discuss the differentiation. Uh, the differentiation and integration, the that 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 are two uh, topics that are remaining in this chapter. Now let's discuss a differentiation. We can do the differentiation on the signal as we see here in this graph. The sine signal or a sine function is the uh, uh, derivative. Uh, if if we apply the derivative property to the sine wave, it will give us a cosine wave. See here in the blue color we have a simple sine wave after the derivation we have this red line that is a cosine wave it is a starting from its magnitude when it has a, a zero time value or at a zero radian or zero degree so it will be converted into the cosine uh, wave so we can differentiate and also we can integrate uh, uh, overall trigonometric functions or any other signals that is a periodic in nature or a non magnitude and uh, non amplitude overall has if if if, if it has a uh, non magnitude or a finite magnitude for a differential uh, for a differentiation of a signal this concept is really important that's why that's why i'm repeating it again uh, for differential differentiation of a signal it must be noted that this operation is only applicable for only continuous signal ready it is only applicable to continuous signal it means it is not applicable to discrete signal as a discrete function cannot be differentiated the modified signal we get on a differentiation has a tangential value of the parent signal at all instances of time mathematically it expressed as a see here we have a sine wave and this sine wave gives a cosine wave after the derivation all the tangential value will be copied to this cosine wave so same line it, they are explaining that the the modified signal we get on a differentiation has a tangential value it it means this is a modified waveform and this is the original waveform the modified waveform has a tangential value of sine wave means if you are to draw one tangent anywhere so same tangent same slope may have uh, or may uh, have with a cosine wave the same tangential value has cosine wave and also has sine wave okay so derivative is defined by the d by dx and this is one arbitrary function that we have considered after the derivation we will have output that is of a y of 2 that is a new function or a der derived function from the x of 2 after the derivation or a differentiation now the differentiation of a sine wave is shown in figure right? so as we have discussed the differentiation of a sine wave will give this red line that is of a cosine wave and uh, other examples uh, that is that will be really useful during our signal and system curriculum see here uh, we have one arbitrary function uh, this is p means parabolic r means ramp u means unit step function and delta means impulse function all the functions uh, we have we had discussed in our previous lectures uh, so if we particular derivative this particularly parabolic function that is a p u of t after derivative we will get a ramp signal means uh, differentiation of a parabolic gives a ramp wave differentiation of a parabolic wave will gives ramp wave and again differentiation of a ramp wave differentiation of a ramp wave will gives a step wave differentiation of a ramp wave will gives a step wave and again the differentiation of a step wave will gives unit impulse function so these are the some differentiation that is that will be really useful during our signal sense system so same thing but in opposite in nature we can find for the integration so uh, write down it somewhere it will be really useful for your systems you have completed your control system course so 
you should know the functions or derivatives of the signals. So a differentiation of parabolic will give a ramp signal. The differentiation of a ramp signal will give the unit step signals, and the differentiation of a unit step signal will give a unit impulse function. So now let's discuss our last topic of the chapter number one, that is integration. Like differentiation, integration of a signal is also applicable to only continuous time signals. The limits of integration will be from minus infinite to present instant of time t. It is mathematically expressed as the integral and uh, the resultant arbitrary function that is of y of t is equal to integral of a minus infinity to t and uh, the, some arbitrary function is integrated with the dt. So the integration of uh, some continuous time signal is uh, shown here. We have taken here one square pulse wave. Uh, it has a positive value at well as well as a negative value. So after the integration, we get some similar to sine wave, but it is not a sine wave, and it has uh, some undefined value that has uh, some single magnitude. See here, this is a square wave. Yes, let's take it. Consider it as a square wave. But uh, for example, this is a position five on the t-axis. So at the location of a five, this graph has a magnitude of a one and has a magnitude of a zero and has a magnitude of a minus one. Means for the one location, we have a three different value. Or if you neglect this uh, zero axis, then we ha we have a total two values from one to minus one. This is a not practicable thing. We can do it on the mathematical thing, but it is not a practical thing. Uh, there, there may be a, some peak value. Right? So for that, you should know the Hilbert criteria for the sinusoidal or a, a particularly square wave functions. It is a infinite combination of uh, infinite values of uh, harmonics, and the resultant will give a square wave. This concept we will discuss in our Fourier series and Fourier transform during our Fourier series and Fourier transform. So take it in your mind. We have uh, some ideal function that is ha that has a value of a 1 and has a value of a minus 1 at specific location. And the same thing repeated other locations. Ready? So see here, we have uh, some finite undefined value uh, that is uh, not practicable. Yes, it is uh, practicable with a high quality of uh, cathode ray oscilloscope, but it is a uh, approximated value but practically uh, this will give you some uh, noise or it has uh, some slope it has a uh, lots of harmonics on it right? so x of t the integration of x of t will give the y of t that is uh, shown here now again the difference uh, if we had done if as we have done the differentiation of the uh, sine wave and we have have a cosine wave same the integration of a cosine wave will give a sine wave so these are the some integration discussion. Now see here the integration of a delta t that we have discussed uh, earlier that the differentiation of a p of t will give r of t. The differentiation of r of t will give u of t and differentiation of u of t will give delta of t. The same sequence but in reverse direction we have seen here. The integration of a delta of t will give u of t. And integration of a u of t will give r of t, and integration of r of t will give parabolic wave. So these are some integral examples. Uh, thank you for this lecture series. Total, we have completed nine lectures in chapter number one. Uh, that will be really useful during our your preceding chapters. So revise it as it possible. If you have any doubt, if you need any more examples, then you can contact me. I will release uh, some. Extra examples.